Hello, it's me, and I'm going to answer some viewer questions that I've uh, had recently that I've actually meant to try to get to in the past. This first one comes from uh, Michael Cartier, Cartier, Carter. Anyway, he says uh, uh, regarding the 7x7 seven seven layer by layer solve, how does one get around placement parity in the situation where there is only one uh, pair of center edges to be swapped? The other pair on uh, are each already on the correct side. So in any case he provided some pictures. What I tried to do is put this in a very similar if not the same configuration as the pictures. He had this over here and then he kindly showed another angle uh, over here as well. So as you can see although it looks like he's got the white version and maybe the pillowed version I'm using this uh, Shangshou um, cubic version over here but I think I managed to get it in exactly the same point and what it looks like the dilemma is with this last layer is first off these need to be rotated we got some things that need to be rotated here um, I'm not sure exactly what are the two that need to be swapped uh, my thinking is that uh, he means this needs to go here these need to go here and these need to go here so um, I hope that that this is addressing the question although it's not completely clear to me but uh, what I figured I would do is get it in that exact same configuration and just kind of show them how I wheel around this so the first thing that I would do with the last layer if you're going to do a layer by layer solve is uh, start out by getting uh, go from the inside and work on the outside so what you want to do first is you want to get all the edges uh, rotated oriented correctly and the first edge to orient correctly are going to be the middle edges over here. So now my contention is that you don't really get parity problems on this puzzle because you're not really reducing it from one parity to the next. Instead of doing a sequential, um, I guess, reduction using cuboid strategies. Um, so in any case, the first thing I would do when getting in a situation like this is let's go ahead and rotate these center edges so that they're permute, permuted correctly. And uh, these are true edges over here. These are kind of false edges. They're, they're more like corners, and we'll, we'll be dealt with as such. So the first thing that I would do is go ahead and do the algorithm to flip these, and that we'll be doing the F U R U I R I F I. Okay, so you can see how much closer you are sort of kind of to where you need to be. What that did is that rotated these correctly. And now the next thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to rotate these correctly. So everything else is rotated correct, but these have to be rotated. And that's the infamous Red Bull algorithm, which is really just a rotation algorithm uh, to rotate edges uh, and flip, basically flip them over. So this is going to be my R, and this is going to be my L move over here, and that's going to be... 2R, 2B, 2U, L. This is the L. 2 up, RI, 2 up, R, 2 up, 2F, R, 2F. Then we do an LI, 2B, 2R. So you can see that now they're all oriented correctly. Now it's a matter of putting them where they need to be, and you're actually very close. What you did is you already have these two next outer um, edge uh, pieces in. So we've already got these in. So now we're going to work on these over here. So all you really want to do is you want to match up the correct colors with uh, on, on the outer edges with the inner edges over here. So you can see that this, uh, this one here is already all in. So what I want to do is we're going to flip, uh, we're going to flip these, we're going to treat these as edges. I'm going to take this green and move it to here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip flop these two. This blue will come here, this green will come here. And you're going to find we're not going to get stuck with any problems with parity. Um, we're going to have misplacement, but we're going to easily be able to put that placement back. So in your particular puzzle, go ahead and swap these edges with each other. So I'm going to be moving these as uh, corners, basically and these are going to be edges. So this is now going to be, be my R as I'm focusing on moving these to where they're supposed to be based on these outer colors. So it's going to be an uh, adjacent edge swap to R, U, to R, U, to R, to U, to R, to U, to R, U, to R, U, I, to R. Now what you're going to find is we created misplacement here, but don't worry about that. We'll keep holding this to where this is on the right, but you can see this is now all in. And you can see that this blue needs to join these blues, while this red joins these reds. So this is simply going to be an opposite edge swap. And that's 2R, 2U, 2R, 2U, 2R, 2U. So you can see we're getting closer. We started with the middle 
joining the corners in, which uh, or the edges just on the outside here. You saw that that was already placed for you. Now we just had to place these guys. So now the next part is going to be, well, treating this as though we have all these edges are now reduced. Now we just have to coordinate it with the corners. Uh, what I would do is put all the corners in in association with each other. So that's going to mean taking any random corner, doesn't really matter, and just doing an adjacent corner swap. So I'm going to, for whatever reason, just do it over here with the blue one in front of me. That's going to be 2R U, 2R UI, 2R, UI D, 2R UI, 2R U, 2R, this moves back. Now what's going to happen is that one of them is going to have both corners in, and that's going to be this. So let's move this to the yellow. And now one more corner swap should do it. The blue one should be here. It's got no choice, and there it is. So do another corner swap to put all the corners where they're supposed to be. So remember, the one that you put in is going to be at the left side here. 2R U, 2R UI, 2R UI D, 2R UI to our U to our, this moves back. Okay, so this is a very familiar situation. All you have to do is corner, is uh, edge swap this into submission. So I'm gonna start off by moving these blue edges to here, to our, to you, to our, to you, to our, to you. So this is in, we've got misplacement here, but that's okay. Move this so that this is in front of us, and then we do edge swapping here, an adjacent edge swap to our U, to our U, to our to you, to our to you, to our U, to our UI, to our, and lo and behold, it is done. I hope that answered uh, Michael's question. He had it right down to that very last layer and was so, so close, but had some, I think, confusion about what parity might be and that uh, thinking that you had to do a single swap or something like that. But the first thing I would do is get all of your edges rotated correctly and then keep moving outward until all the edges are rotated correctly again. Any further questions regarding the layer by layer solve, let me know as it's one of my favorite ways of doing it. Thanks for watching. Hello, it's me and I'm going to see what I can do with a 2x3x4, this brick cuboid. This one is fully functional and these three-dimensionally printed 15 millimeter little cubes. So we start off by first taking the stickers and taking them off in a very particular conformation. And there it is over here. So you can see we've taken it off to a degree where we have a one by two by three pattern as opposed to two by three by four. And then we take these guys and then sticker them in a very particular pattern as well. And now that we have these here, how shall we combine these and what shall we create out of, out of this? Well, you can see that these sticker patterns match this over here. So what I'm going to do is take my trusty super glue and start sticking these on and let's see what we end up with.
So this is the final piece here. You've heard of the uh, cube illusion. Well, this is the original cube illusion uh, by Tony Fisher. It um, gives you this illusion of having a cube outside of a cube, so to speak, and it has some interesting bandaging. So the aspects of a cube illusion is that it looks like a cube illusion, but there's also some bandaging and something of an arch where this is glued together over here. Uh, well, I really did enjoy the cube illusions, and as such, felt compelled to bring a couple more into the world, taking it down a few notches as well to the earlier versions of uh, Cube Illusions, as you've seen me uh, do before. But in addition to that, to actually bring out higher versions of the Cube Illusions as well, which led to further explorations of exactly what I could do and explorations of how much deeper into the cube illusions I could go, including the massive 7x7 cube illusion as well. To me, it uh, is a fascinating blending of structure, function, and aesthetics, which is ultimately what I try uh, to achieve with a collection. Uh, this represents a cuboid illusion. With a cuboid illusion, it has the same thing where we have uh, bandaging that's actually already there being a cuboid. This is a brick cuboid, but I actually made a little bit of a further bandaging with these two together, which should enhance the challenge of this. So we'll see just what happens and where this kind of a puzzle can take me, that already there's some bandaging being a brick cuboid, but how much does this extra bandaging um, impact with this? So it drives us forward to keep expanding our designs. Design. When does interest turn to fascination, and when does fascination turn to obsession? obsession. Is it the splash of dopamine reinforcing our thoughts and motivating our actions, or the surge of adrenaline that grips our attention and precludes us from thinking of anything else? With the tools that we procure and with the planning that we place, we create our world and mold it into what we want to see and what we find the most fascinating. What then is the ultimate goal of our endeavor to create? create. Ultimately, it's our desire, by using the crafts learned from technique with a splash of individual creativity, to surround ourselves in what we uniquely believe to be beautiful. beautiful.